So, Katie, what is your big takeaway from this episode? I have a lot of thoughts. I think I'm still processing this episode. Because as I was typing my, my takeaway list, I was like, I still think I'm going through it in my head. And going through the episode today helped a lot because I think I, that allowed me to process it for the podcast too. Cinematically, is just a beautiful episode, just literally a movie that we get to watch for a TV show. The people who worked on the show from designing the planets to the ships that we see, just the makeup, to all everything is just so well done. And I just love that we get to experience it. And I know I say it all the time, but you can tell there's a lot of love built into the show and that the people who make the show are very excited about the show and what they're putting out. And as a sci-fi fan, I really appreciate that because then I'm excited about the show because it's just so easy to get immersed, which is proven by the fact during the Pterodon sequences, all that, everything happened on the Mocklin planet. I was so invested and so anxious about what was going to happen that it was easy to get lost in it, which is hard for me. Because, I mean, nowadays I'm so analytical about movies and TV shows because we do the podcast, like, and I've done other podcasts where I'm watching shows and I'm like, hmm, I wonder how they did that. Oh, that's interesting. They must have set up a shot like this. And, like, this, specifically the sequence when they're in that huge battle um, above uh, Draconius, Draconius, what is it? Draconis. Draconis. I was just so invested and just stressed in the good way. I want to say it in the good way of just like mm. what's going to happen. We talked about the Krill Mocklin Alliance off stream. It's interesting or off podcast. It's interesting to see that it actually came true. <laughs> so I'm afraid of what we manifest and we need to be careful about what we say is what I'm going to <laughs> put out there. Um <laughs> I'm really sad they killed off Admiral Perry just because the admirals have a special place in my heart. Just they, they're special characters that pop up and we get to experience. And I love Ted Danson too. So seeing that end of Admiral Perry's storyline is quite sad. But yeah, we've had years of him on the show. I know. But it was a very necessary part of the show because I think it drove a lot uh, after the fact that he passed away in the show so sad that admiral perry had to go and then also we lost another person this episode which was ensign charlie burke and i really thought her whole story was very well crafted from her first episode where she's super antagonistic and not even wanting anything to do with kaylon or isaac and then we get to this episode and you just in a way, I fell in love with her character, and I'm so sad that she's been taken from me now because I was just so excited about Isaac and her relationship and watching that blossom and just her interactions and kind of getting settled in with the rest of the crew and just them singing at the, the cabin together and just seeing yeah. that camaraderie, and it made her death very impactful, I think. I didn't expect to be... Uh, kind of punched in the face with emotion when I watched this episode, but it, it definitely, it definitely affected me. And I put in my notes, it's not quite the picnic I was hoping for. It was more of a picnic of death, but the, <laughs> the essence is still there of mm -hmm. what I meant by that. And then the joke throughout the whole podcast is just that I wanted Isaac and Charlie to have that common ground and they did get there eventually. They did, yeah. And I'm just so sad that they got there and she's gone now. Right. And then, oh my gosh, Isaac's eulogy. I'm just sitting there like, come on, show, you can't just keep doing this to me. And <laughs> when he listed out the time that he knew her, that was the thing that got me. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the whole pancake thing too, but just when you think about Isaac, he is a robot and he can track those things down to like a fraction of a second. But he noted the frat, yeah. like the second that she, that he stopped knowing her. Yeah. And I was like, that is just so poignant. And just a little bit of that existential crisis kick in at this moment too, where you're just like, 
man, life is fleeting. And it's just, this was a really beautiful story that we got to witness. I was shocked that she died. I didn't see that coming. I didn't anticipate that. I, I was prepared for a death after Admiral Perry, but I did not see that it was going to be Charlie. So overall, I feel like Anne Winters did an incredible job in the show. I'm sad that her run is over now for the Orville. And I just have to say kudos to her because she impacted me hugely in nine episodes. So yeah. I already cried once. I'm not going to like when I think about it too hard, <laughs> I start to get emotional about it because it did impact me. Um, I feel like everyone in this episode really shined, especially Ann Winters. Um, and I really feel like this episode had it all in the sense that it had action drama, just it had something for everybody in it. But it was just such a well crafted episode from start to finish. Mm. Uh, I think I'm still processing the episode. <laughs> But overall, I think this is one that I will never forget. You know how there's just certain episodes in a show that stay with you? And I think this is one that will stay with me for a very long time. There is a shot that is living rent-free in my brain right now. And it is the one on Charlie's eyes uh -huh. with the fireball in her. Yeah. So that's, that lives rent-free in my head now, too. Yeah. It's just... One of those things, too, where I didn't feel like this was gratuitous or anything that was just done for shock factor. I feel like it mm -hmm. moved the story along, and I appreciate that. Because sometimes shows do do that, where they're just ripping and tearing because they can. Uh, I have specific shows in mind that I'm thinking of. But what I appreciate about it is that this was a purposeful death, and it was one that I feel like was crafted beautifully in this story the, mm -hmm. as a whole um and man yeah i think this yeah this is going to stick with me for a while so that's my takeaway from this episode i feel like i could probably talk about it forever i'm glad isaac and charlie had their their moment and just getting to feel that that little bit of love between them at the end there and i just oh god they just ripped my heart out with this episode so yeah uh kudos to ann winters for portraying charlie burke and it's sad that this is the end of her run for the show so rob what's your takeaway from this episode what a ride mm -hmm. this episode was like you mentioned earlier we had speculated off air that there would be a krill mocklin alliance that would be a possibility and here it is come to fruition but you would have told me that by the end of this episode, the Kalon would be on their way to becoming part of the Union. I would not believe you. That is something I did not see coming, and yet here we are. I like it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great development in the story. It's become redundant at this point <laughs> because we say it every episode, <laughs> but the visual effects are just so stellar. It's so good. They're unbelievable. Yeah. I. I particularly loved the lighting of the pterodons when they're fighting in the atmosphere and there's like sunset colors mm -hmm. around everything. It was gorgeous. It looked so good. Of course you'd of love course the pterodons. Something on the pterodons, <laughs> yeah. That's what caught my eye. Yeah. Uh, the big moral question of the episode is whether genocide can be justified if it means your own survival. The argument is made early on that genocide denies the potential of change and evolution. Change that we've previously seen in both Isaac and in Timis. Mm -hmm. Even if Timis's was a little different. Ed's faith in that ideal is validated by the end. And I think that's important. I think it's great when optimistic sci-fi, and I love optimistic sci-fi so much more than any other kind of sci-fi, because it presents an ideal and usually by the end validates that ideal to say the right thing to do was the right thing to do. I love that. I'm happy they went that way and that it turned out that the Kalon had a realization. It's that, that little bit of hope of, mm -hmm. you know, I'm already so excited about the fact that the Kalon can become more sentient in that emotional way. So I'm just over here jazzed about that. But 
I, I was really excited that the teachable moment minimizes it so much, but that's something that happened, changed their perspective, and I think that's a really cool way to do it. Yeah, even the ones who you think are most incapable of change can still learn and grow. Yeah. It's a great message to have here, and I like it a lot. Finally, Charlie Burke. I have seen all sorts of weird fan backlash directed at her. Oh, really? Because, yeah, I have, and it's disappointing. And it's generally around the fact that she was so outspoken and mean toward Isaac, and they thought she was a one-note character. But from a storytelling perspective, every character can't start in an optimal place. If you do that, there's nowhere for the character to go. Charlie's a character that was consumed by trauma and lashed out because of it. Yeah. And that's a thing that we were made to understand and feel from the beginning with her. Yeah, I totally got where she was coming from. Every time there was an issue with her and Isaac or something, I'm, I was always holding out the hope that they would eventually meet at a common place. And they did. Yeah. But I also realized that it's not just going to be like, oh, you're all right. I guess it's okay to just, you know, it's not like that. Like, life isn't like that. Right. And I feel like it's unfair to put that on her because she had a little bit more of an aggressive side towards a character a lot of us really do love. But it's also just like, real life not everybody gets along not everybody is going to have kind words to say about somebody else and it's just a factor of how things are i guess i missed out on the the backlash stuff but that's i feel like her character was very well crafted and she played her really well yeah i agree i'm curious to see what people will say now that this has happened like if they've changed their I opinion the on curiosity. that yeah there were some people who already kind of changed their tone when she made up with isaac mm -hmm. and it kind of clicked for them and i imagine this will do even more for that i do feel in a way that kind of like you said before she never really got over amanda's death yeah and to me that made her sacrifice more believable i think when it happened and she's just in focus mode i'm going to overload this and then it's really dark to say this but like when you're in those those throes of grief uh and yes it's been a long time i think since her ship has exploded and she's lost mm -hmm. amanda but it sadly felt like that's what she wanted in a way yeah it felt like and i mean she's said it mm -hmm. internally in a way too but it did feel like in that moment she was able to let go because of that and it made it feel okay to her like it's her at peace with what's yes. happening yeah like she was so traumatized and tortured by what had happened that for her she didn't necessarily want to die mm -hmm. but when put in a situation where she felt like she had to sacrifice herself it made it justifiable to her. And it makes sense. Like if you think about grief in general, like they have all those stages of grief and stuff, but like her getting to the point where she's facing the fact that she's going to die, that she's okay mm -hmm. with it. Cause she gets to be with the person that she loves. Yeah. So like, it's kind of poetic. It's really sad when you think about it on more than just a surface level but it yeah. makes a lot of sense and if you paid attention during this season it makes sense for her character and you can see the way that she grew i just i don't know i feel like charlie became one of my favorite characters this season and i really was like dang like this episode specifically you just see her in action and just that kind of person you want in those situations who is just like i'm getting it done or i'm confident i'm going to make sure that i handle things and it showed her strength in a lot of ways mm -hmm. she was very outspoken at times and she said some things people probably didn't agree with and you know i just think it was a really well done story yeah yeah ultimately i found 
her character's arc and her story to be incredibly satisfying, which is also why her sacrifice hits mm -hmm. so emotionally. Like if it didn't work, we wouldn't feel this. Oh yeah, like I'm still like I'm still fighting back tears like as we're talking about it. Yeah. And I'm over here like just just don't do it because the video is gonna go on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, like it it impacted me so much more than I think I expected it to. Mm -hmm. Same. So like I even thinking about it, like this was like a traumatic episode of the Orville. And it's something where it's a testament to the actors as well as the story that they help facilitate and mm -hmm. shows that it was effective and what it was trying to tell that like someone who's not like brand new to the, the series this season it was like ooh, she's a little bit angry at the kalons and now we're here and i'm just like don't cry on the podcast because they killed charlie <laughs> <laughs> yeah and her sacrifice like i literally just have so much respect for her character because she made this ultimate sacrifice for the pretty much the universe and when you see how much she's like just wipe them out like just her character is so complex it's not just an easy answer one way or the other but i feel like it was very effective yeah and there is a again to bring up another kind of mirrored thing the episode is called domino mm -hmm. for two reasons because they talk about the device earlier, the first time they mention domino is that it's like a domino effect. The device hits one in the network and it kind of goes through all the others that are in the same proximity and destroys them all, like falling dominoes. Same thing here. And Isaac mentions a domino during the eulogy. I know, yeah. Saying that Charlie's sacrifice is like a domino effect and it hit the Kalon and went through the Kalon and it changed them in a way. So it's a different set them up and knock them down, except this time we're not destroying them. We're teaching them to grow and learn and change. I like literally speechless. <laughs> like it's just, <laughs> it was such a well done episode. I just can't get over it. And I think that's why, like coming up with my takeaway, I was like, there's just so much to mm -hmm. say about it that there's almost no words in all of the words at the same time. Yeah. So I appreciated just the, the writing in the show, the layers with the dominoes. Cause it, like you said, it works in so many ways for how we arrived here. And then also how we, how Charlie kind of changed the course of history. Yeah. <sighs> the only thing I disliked about it, because there's always something. Not enough right? pterodon? <laughs> I got a lot of pterodon. It's more than I expected, and I'm pretty satisfied with yeah. it. Yeah. The only thing I dislike is no more Charlie Burke and no more Ann Winters. I know. Because like you, she really grew on me. <sighs> I liked her from the beginning. I never had really any I animosity either. toward the character, and that surprises me that people would. But I, uh, yeah, I'm bummed. Yeah. I'm bummed that she won't be in the show anymore. I think it's just one of those characters that it hurts when they take them away. And it's it's like, well, I, did we manifest this? Because I was talking about the whole Game of Thrones stuff at the beginning of the season. Did I do this? Did I make this happen? Is it my fault? You may have. You may have. But it it, it shows that she was a character that meant a lot, clearly to you and I, that it, it evoked the reaction that it did because I will miss her as well. And I'm like bummed because I'm like, man, I really wanted to see more of her interactions with everybody mm -hmm. and her growth was so cool to see this season. So damn, dang it. <laughs> Just going to like, I need to like, like have a spa day or something after this. Well, the, the positive takeaway is that the character's arc was so satisfying. Yeah, it felt So even complete. though it ended the way it did, yeah, it felt like a complete circle. It's a rare thing that you get when a character's introduced and we say goodbye to them in the same season and they meant so much to us within that time. It's so intentional. Like, everything about Charlie was so intentional. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the show in general 
always has an intention, which is why I think I just trust the process. Like, like I never felt like, oh, Charlie's here. Why would they do this? Like, I'm just like, just trust the process because they mm -hmm. always, they always, they always do it somehow where they end up breaking my heart or leaving me satisfied. And I do feel like what's sad is she died, but I feel like it did, it did complete a circle. And I don't feel like, because sometimes there's like deaths in shows and you're like, why did they do, like, this doesn't make sense. And it just feels, it doesn't, like, I have so many, like, I just, it made sense. And I feel like I'm very sad about it. But she, she told a, a dang good story in her episodes. It worked. Yeah. Before we get out of here, we have one more thing to do. Because Katie's husband, Mark, is also a big fan of the Orville and always leaves us with his one sentence review. I need ice cream. <laughs> Mark's log, 72720222. It has been nine weeks since season three started, and so far, my crying hasn't stopped. I will update you next week, but for now, I'm going to go get my heart back, as it has been ripped out of me yet again. Mark out. Hey, thank you so much for watching. This is just a segment of the full podcast that Rob and I do. So if you want to hear more of our thoughts and full episode discussions, go to thegeekgeneration.com slash quantum drive.